was before the game that head coach Michael Schieler said we can't wait for things to get really loud. He was looking forward to the fans being back in attendance at the Eintracht Stadion for that first home game of the season. However, what resulted was actually what they call here in Germany a Fife concert, which is a concert of whistles. It wasn't quite the noise as he was hoping to inspire in the home ranks, but a chance to maybe rectify the situation today. And there is Michael Schieler. He said after the game, he said, I understand the frustration of the fans. He said, I envisioned our first home game very differently. And he said, I can't sugarcoat it. I've never seen my team defend like that before. And to call the performance porous would be kind to Braunschweig. For the opponents tonight, Hamburg. Last season, the DFB Pokal first round produced a bit of a horror show. A 4-1 loss to Dinamo Dresden. They were 3-0 down after 53 minutes. And while Onana grabbed a consolation effort in the 89th minute, it wasn't enough to spare their blushes. And they'll be hoping to redeem themselves this season. That a game that was arguably best remembered for Tony Leisner confronting a fan in the stands after the game that had been heckling him throughout. The moment that he apologised for afterwards. Fans giving the players a worthy reception here at the Eintracht Stadion this evening. Tim Walter, the Hamburg head coach. He said, in the Pokal, there are no favourites. He says, smaller clubs are also capable of success. That's why it's the Pokal. And that, arguably, is why we love it. Referee today, Tobias Veltz. Uh, DFB referee since 1999, a policeman by trade. A year off last season, but worth noting that he did take charge of the DFB Pokal final in 2020 when Bayern München picked up a 4 0 win, excuse me, 4 2 win against Bayer Leverkusen. The pre match huddles taken care of. Manuel Winsheimer. The attacking options that Hamburg will be looking to provide goals tonight. Well, on a day of near misses, and upsets in the DFB Pokal first round. We closed the show on Sunday's action with a clash of two fallen giants of German footballers, Eintracht Braunschweig, play host to Hamburg. Braunschweig have made a winless start to their campaign two games in. Hamburg, meanwhile, unbeaten with a win and a draw. However, league campaigns count for little. This is the do-or-die world of the DFB Pokal. Pure knockout football, and both sides will be looking to get a positive result here in the first round. So important to lay the foundations for a season. Hamburg competing in the DFB Pokal for the 74th time, more than any other club that is one of the few records they do still hold many in the top tier have since been lost following their first ever relegation back in 2018 many a Hamburg fan would have hoped that their drop into the Zweite Bundesliga would have been short-lived now entering their fourth season in the second tier of German football that promotion 
the promised land of the Bundesliga remains out of reach for now. In their three previous seasons, they finished fourth on every occasion, Hamburg. Won it well here, the visitors. Sami Kittel, who scored an early brace in the game against Braunschweig last season. On the final day, it was a game that confirmed Braunschweig's demotion to the Dritte Liga, the third tier of German football. Had they won that game, they would have secured a relegation playoff spot which would have entered them into a two-legged tie to potentially secure their safety. Instead, they had to suffer the ignominious fate of automatic relegation. <laughs> Hamburger establishing an early measure of control on proceedings and as a feature of their style of play and approach to the game under Tim Walter. 45-year-old German head coach brought in in the summer after Daniel Thune was let go towards the back end of last season when it became clear that promotion would be out of reach for Hamburg. Tim Walter is convinced, though, that Hamburg have the pieces in place to get them back into the top tier of German football and he would love to be the man to guide them to it. There he is the former Stuttgart head coach. On arriving at the club he says, I tried to focus on attack but it's impossible for the attack to function if the defence isn't solid. On from Multau. Came to nothing in the end for Braunschweig, but it draws applause from the home fans, and rightly so. We haven't had much to cheer in recent months. The Braunschweig supporters. Five months without a win on home soil. The last, a 1-0 victory against SV Sandhausen back in March. Breaking pass, looking for Robert Glatzel. He was a bit of a cup specialist with seven goals to his name in six games in the DFB Pokal, including a hat-trick against Bayern, München no less. That coming in a game back in the 2018-19 campaign, the quarter-finals, Heidenheim meeting with the DFB Pokal record title holders, and they gave an incredible account of themselves in that 5-4 defeat. Injury here to Sebastian Muller. Took an elbow to the temple from Jonas David. Was concerned, but the fall was arguably as nasty as the elbow to the head, and he went down clutching. His left knee just seemed to get caught under him as he landed, and as a result, Braunschweig earlying, or excuse me, readying an early substitution, and that really is a tough sight to see. He 
It was Enrique Penetauna who is being sent to warm up. Right there. Right now, though, the concern for Sebastian Muller, signed just recently on loan from Bielefeld to provide attacking reinforcements. A knee injury, always of great concern, but good to see him up on his feet and moving well. Just 20 years of age, Sebastian Muller. A great reputation following some impressive performances during his time on the youth books with Est FC Köln. 37 goals in 63 appearances combined for their under-17 and under-19 team. Signed by Bielefeld, has only made two appearances for Armenia. Now looking for more game time with Eintracht Braunschweig in the Dritte Liga. And he's back on the pitch now. And Zombie finding Gimara. Klatzel, little flick on. Gimara keeps his run going. It's a good shot and a good save from Yasmin Fezic to keep out the effort from the Hamburg right back. Lovely combination play involving Robert Klatzel. It was a good effort from Gimara. He's never scored in his. DFB Pokal career tonight making his fourth appearance. Early corner now for Hamburg. Strong header out by Multaut, but they haven't managed to clear their lines here, the Lions. Challenge from Niko Kievski. to go back 40 years to 1981 for the only previous day of people car meeting between these two brown flag picking up a 4-3 win on home soil in extra time after twice trailing in the game first three to an opener from felix margat after 30 minutes the game was already tied up at two wall then there were three goals in extra time the winner though was scored by Ronald Vorm in the 112th minute for Braunschweig and the goals for Hamburg coming from three pretty illustrious names Felix Margat I mentioned Manfred Kautz as well and Jimmy Hartwig names that will elicit fond memories for Hamburg fans, even if they didn't emerge victorious on that occasion against Braunschweig back in Very measured approach from Hamburg so far in the opening exchanges. A dominated possession. Still looking to provide that final pass that might really do Braunschweig some damage. But willing to be patient.
Sebastian Schornlau. One of the summer signings for Hamburg. Brought in from Paderborn. In terms of the big moves that Highest Fowl have made this summer, and I'll hold the thought because a chance brewing here. Three in the middle to aim for if the cross could be provided, but Tim Leibold ended up running himself into a bit of trouble, and as a result, delivery not forthcoming. Sean now looking for the ball over the top, it's a good one as well. Just a little long for Sonny Kittel, who didn't break the offside trap either. A reminder that there is no video assistant referee in place for the first round fixtures. They tend to be introduced in the round of 16 in the DFB Pokal. And moments like that. Sonny Kittel was onside, the flag did go up. Fortunately, not a game-changing moment. Grand Flag happy to sit deep and really keep things tight. Making life difficult for Hamburg and a clear improvement, it has to be said, on the performance from the 4 0 loss to Victoria Berlin on the weekend. There's poor defending and then there's inviting your opponents to score, and that's what Braunschweig really did with some of their defending. The gaps in their back line were gaping. Multaup drawing the foul. And Michal Schiele said after that game against Victoria Berlin, we can't repeat the same mistakes. He said we're hoping to smooth out those edges for the visit of Hamburg. So far, a lot smoother sailing for Braunschweig. Switch of play here to find Tim Leibold and there's space here for Hamburg to exploit. He moves it on quickly to Winsheimer in a strong foot race there. And it will be a corner to Hamburg. Danilo Weber felt he had been fouled. He did get a clip of the ankle there after putting the ball behind for a corner. Strong case to be made. Home fans making their feelings heard about the decision from referee Tobias Veltz, but it will be a quarter to Hamburg, Sonny Kittel to take. Glatzel just glided over his head. Glatzel will be the chief target man for Hamburg all evening. I was talking about those major summer signings that have been made by Haasfau in the summer. Three big names out, three big names in is arguably the way you can look at it. Simon Toroda left on a free transfer to join Schalke, so they brought in Robert Klatzel. Amadou Onana has joined Lille in a big money move. Jonas Meffert brought in from Freiburg to replace him. Sebastian Schornlau, the man to replace Rick van Drongelen, who's joined Union Berlin, and here come Hamburg. Cross blocked, clearance not completed. The flick around the corner was cute, but not clinical. So many red shirts to aim for, a good cross will do it. 
And now a foot race. Jonas David trying to stretch those long legs, but... I think it's fair to say that the advantage on the side there of Sebastian Muller, who looks to have recovered well from that nasty fall in the opening exchanges. Out with a chance to cross, palm clear, but only as far as Henning tried to shift the ball onto his favoured right foot to get the shot off. And a little nervy moment at the back there for Hamburg. Daniel Hoyer Fernandez, not the most convincing piece of keeping. Chance from the corner for Brown try Kievsky. Takes its looping towards the back post. Ryan Baron trying to keep the chance alive. Brown try finally giving the home fans something to get their teeth stuck into tonight. Taken throw in. Two balls on the pitch, but play goes on. Antoine <laughs> Braunschweig were staples in the Bundesliga from the early 60s to the mid-80s after being one of the founding members along with Hamburg in 1963. They picked up a surprise Bundesliga title in 1967 under legendary head coach Helmut Johansson. However, four years later, they were plunged into chaos amidst the 1971 Bundesliga scandal in which a host of matches turned out to be fixed in Germany's top tier. Braunschweig not blameless in that scandal either. Their players were given and promised a bonus by a third party. It was something that the club struggled to recover from. It led to some rocky times. The financial burdens grew and grew. They were relegated in 1985 and it wasn't until 2013 when they gained promotion once again. Torsten Lieberknecht, the man who gained legendary status for guiding them back to that promised land. It was only a one-season stint, it should be noted. But a big moment in the history of this famous club. Both clubs really hold iconic status. Braunschweig arguably with one of the most iconic kits ever in world football. The Jägermeister sponsor, front and centre. Jägermeister became the first brand to ever feature as a sponsor on a football kit in German football back in 1973. And a fun story that were it not for the DFB, the German Football Association 
Eintracht Braunschweig could have at one point been renamed Jägermeister Braunschweig. Jägermeister, the local thriving business. And the CEO at the time was heavily involved with Eintracht Braunschweig. Instead, they kept their name, nicknamed the Lions. And it was Michael Schieler who said when he came in, I can fully identify with the path the club wants to forge. And just like Hamburg, Eintracht Braunschweig this season, their target is promotion. Chance there from the home fans that have long been missed. We had fans back in the stadiums during the European Championships in the summer. Italy taking all the glory at the end of it. In German football, stadium atmospheres are one of the unique selling points and a cherished aspect that was long missed during the coronavirus pandemic and it's good to have fans back in the stadiums. Important that it's done in the right manner. Regulations have been put in place. Clubs, league authorities have all consulted with state authorities to come up with a plan. The dream is ultimately to have sold out stadiums once again for now. Half capacity stadiums at the max will have to suffice. But anything is better than nothing. And we didn't want to get used to the nothing of last season. Long throw from Kievsky has caused a few problems. Flick on now. Sounds like trying to get a shot on goal, and it's Brian Henning again. He's arguably had the home side's best two chances of the game. But clear-cut opportunities, few and far between for both sides so far. And Henning was always going to have a tough task finding the target there, given the number of bodies between him and the goal. But having withstood the early onslaught from Hamburg, in the opening exchanges, Braunschweig starting to show signs of courage up front, both in their work on and off the ball. They're pressing well, but they're showing ambition once they get in possession as well. Corner work short by Hamburg, something a little different from this set piece. Glatzel is still the target for Sonny Kittel. Right now, Braunschweig doing well to keep Hamburg quiet. You can see there, while the away side are dominating things in terms of possession, they really haven't done enough with the ball. They're not 
doing enough to really stretch and break down this Brown Trike back line. A little more pace needs to be injected into their movements, both on and off the ball in the final third. So far, a little laborious from Hayes Falwin. Well, just to underline the point, very complacent mistake there made. Maximilian Moore and David Kinsombi not on the same page. Arguably, they're in different books on that occasion. It was only 77 days since these two sides met on the final day of the Zweite Bundesliga campaign last season. Hamburg coming away with a 4-0 victory. All started off by a Sonny Kittel brace early on. But just to underline how extreme a summer Eintracht Braunschweig have had. That game was only three months ago. But only five of the 15 Brown Tribe players that featured in that game are still at the club today. Lots of upheaval at the club. And here come Hamburg with a chance to make it 1-0. Jan Guimara has rounded the keeper and broken the deadlock. A bolt from the blue for Hamburg, who have been kept quiet so far, but... The breakthrough comes before the half-hour mark and Braunschweig are questioning whether the goal should stand. Was it a foul by David Kinsombi on Yanis Nikolaou? Not enough for Tobias Veltz. And Jan Guillemara picked up the loose ball took command of the situation and having had an early shot saved by Yasmin Fezic has provided the opening goal for Hamburg and there were whistles heard last weekend after the 4-0 loss to Victoria Berlin the whistles for a very different reason so far, Braunschweig had just been getting themselves into the game. They'd just been giving the home fans something to get behind. And that moment will really take the wind out of their sails. Given how chances have been few and far between, the key then is to take them when they come. And you have to say, and Guillemara has done that. Well, the Klatzel, neat little turn inside the box, couldn't bundle his way past two challengers. And the cup does provide magical moments. For the man on the ball here, Jan Guimara, his first ever goal as a Hamburg player. An important goal as well. Having given them the lead, the man signed from Faufel Borchum a couple of seasons ago. Kittel, a change of angle. It's a good delivery as well, and it was met by the head of Sebastian Schornlau. 
no goals to his name in 13 DFB Pokal appearances, including tonight, but that wasn't far away from the man signed in the summer from Paderborn. Hamburg competing in the DFB Pokal for the 74th time, which is a competition record. Three-time winners in 63, 76 and 87, six-time finalists as well. But it has been a long time since they've reached that illustrious final in Berlin. The closest they went most recently was in the 2018-19 campaign. They reached the semi-finals. They met Erby Leipzig there and they suffered a 3-1 loss. In four of the last ten seasons, they have been knocked out in the first round highest foul, so there is still hope here for Braunschweig if they can get a goal back, and goodness me, that wasn't far away from producing equaliser. Henning going to keep the chance alive after Kittel's failed clearance. Header at the back post there from Robin Kalser. Not enough. To trouble Daniel Hoyer Fernandez. There's a clear approach to the, to the game and a clear philosophy on throw here from Hamburg under Tim Walter. Wants to play his way out from the back, possession based football, composure needed though, and a mistake drawn by the press of Braunschweig. They can't capitalise, though. Henning with a loose touch. Winsheimer. And left. Ludovic Rice with a little bit of work to do there. And as a result, a foul breaks up the plate. Here is the goal scorer. Running Leibold, good run being made by Vinsheim. Instead, it goes to Glatzel. Flag stays down this time. Robert Glatzel again looking for that fancy flick. Pulled it off a couple of times, but not on that occasion. And a chance now for Braunschweig on the break. Three on three. Sebastian Muller going alone and finding the side netting. Well, he wants the fans up. And the fans do respond, you can. Certainly hear their backing. And Sebastian Muller, who looked to have injured his knee earlier in the game, trying to do it all alone there, the man on loan from Bielefeld. But he has restoked the fires of the atmosphere here at the Eintracht Stadion. The 12th man has been sorely missed, not just for the noise they make, but the ability to raise the game of a side. And a flick on there. From Muller again. Chance to reset now for Braunschweig. Weber, that wide to Muller. And forced a lot deeper now takes the better safe than sorry approach, not taking any risks. Braunschweig now with a chance to get men back behind the ball. Reset their position, that's a good pass though, it's come through to Henning. Morris Martel. Nicolau with the shot, always going wide though. Reflection. And a corner for good measure, though. And if you're Eintracht Braunschweig, if you're a fan or your head coach, Michael Schieler, this is the response you would have wanted, having fallen behind against a run of play thanks to that goal from Jan Guillemara. Morris Multau to take the corner. The big men up from the back. 
headed clear by the first man. Always a bit of a pet peeve when a corner doesn't beat the first man. Pace needed, but precision can oftentimes be a much more valuable asset in those moments. Just stroking the ball at the back. And no real pressure from the Braunschweig press with every yellow shirt inside the Braunschweig half. David Kinsombi there, man who scored a brace in the 4-2 win for Hamburg on this ground on match day 17 last season. Part of a strong comeback from Hamburg in that game after they had fallen 2-0 down thanks to goals from Felix Corson, Marcel Baer. For the Lions stand up. <laughs> Sounds to save up. There's enough to put a few extra goosebumps on the arms in this DFB Pokal first round. It was Hamburg head coach Tim Walter before the game said this is an awesome competition it's do or die games eat or be eaten and he said you're normally at your sharpest on a nice edge and right now this game being played on a nice edge as robin Kalsa stings the palms of daniel hoya fernandez the heads have not dropped for eintracht brown trike since falling behind if anything They've come on much stronger since going a goal down through Jan Guimara. The deliveries from corners could improve, though, it has to be said, and unfortunately, no improvements there. case of the handbags there after the tussle between Sonny Kittel and Sebastian Muller, a 20-year-old not happy with the physical nature of the challenge there. Tobias Velt is a policeman by trade and certainly a man capable of calming down those types of situations though. Six goals from set pieces last season for Eintracht Braunschweig. That's a good ball in though, bouncing a dangerous area. Multal, oh, he's got a lot of space to pick out a cross now. On the turn, Luke Ithorst sees his effort blocked by Maximilian Rohr. 
And former Bremen youth player Luke Ithorst. Having failed to make the breakthrough with Werder, looking to make a name for himself with Braunschweig. Kievsky now with the corner. Deep towards the back post. Hamburg living dangerously right now as we approach half time. But now a chance for Hart SV to counter. The numbers are not on their side. Clip of the heels there. Vinsheimer does get the decision to go his way. First yellow card of the game. Being shown there to Bayern Berendt. In it, you know. Free kick for Hamburg, met by the head of Robert Klatzel. Couldn't turn it goalwards, couldn't find a teammate either. I'll tell you, between the goal against the run of play, and there might be one here for Brown right at the great ball and a great goal for the host. Throw in taken quickly, the counter works to perfection they caught Hamburg napping and it's one all on the stroke of half time and you have to say that is no less than Braunschweig have deserved Jan Guimara there tried to keep the second ball in play Braunschweig weren't to be distracted though and Luke Ehorst pointed to where he wanted it and he got it right there from Sebastian Muller. A simple tap in, and it is game on in this DFB Pokal first round tie in Braunschweig. We have a real cut tie on our hands here, ladies and gentlemen. This game is turning into a game of firsts. Jan Guimara scoring his first ever goal for Hamburg. Now at the other end, Luke Ihorst doing the same, having joined the club in the summer from Werder Bremen's reserve side. He only scored six goals in 23 appearances for Bremen's reserves, but his time with their youth sides at under-19 and under-17 level produced plenty of goals and goal involvement. Thirty-three in 43 games for the under-19s, 30 in 28 games for the under-17s, and today Luke Ithorst has opened his account for Eintracht Braunschweig. And at a perfect time as well, it has to be said. Because for all the control that Hamburg have had on proceedings, they haven't looked dangerous enough, and they haven't really done enough to quell the threat of Braunschweig when they have had rare moments of possession. And last season in the tie to Bundesliga, there looked to be a golf in class between these two sides. That has not been the case this evening. Oh, and they really have the bit between their teeth now. It's a two-on-three break. Ihorst does well to hold up the ball and find the man who provided the assist for his goal, Sebastian Muller. The two young strikers making a real nuisance of themselves. It's that youthful guile and ambition that they have 
brought to this Brown Tribe front line that had been missing at the start of this season. And after that setback, they needed to do something to get the fans behind them. And they've gone to great lengths to do so. Brown Tribe have been rewarded for it. Could there be a late twist in the tail of this wonderful first half, though? It took a while to get warmed up, but we're in the hot seat now. And there goes the half-time whistle. A slow start to proceedings with Hamburg in complete control. They took the lead through Jan Guimara, scoring his first ever goal as a Hamburg player. But instead of letting their heads drop after going behind, Braunschweig picked themselves up and came on strong. And they rewarded themselves with an equaliser. Luke Ehorst getting the goal on the stroke of half-time. All to play for in this cup tie. Hamburg have the possession, but it's one all at half-time. Join us again for the second half, which promises much after a thrilling end to the first. Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack to get us back in the groove for this Dear People Carl first round tie as we enter the second half. Both teams making changes at the break. Hamburg have made two swaps. Moritz Heyer and Bakri Yatta have come into the field of play, yet to confirm exactly who they've come on for. Meanwhile, for Braunschweig, it's Sebastian Muller who has made way to be replaced by Enrique Peña Sauna. Looks like Moritz Heyer has come on for Sebastian Schornlau. Well, it took the first half a little bit of time to warm up, but once it got there, we had a thrilling encounter. Hamburg took the lead through Jan. Gimara. And it was Braunschweig who, despite falling behind, came on strong towards the end of the first half and rewarded themselves with an equaliser scored by Luke Ihor, set up by Sebastian Muller, who has since come off at half time. As we see confirmation there that Ludovic Reis has made way as one of the half time substitutes for Hamburg. Manuel Vinsheimer, the other to make way to be replaced by Bakri Yatta. Not the greatest game from Vinsheimer. Now, defensive duties needed from Hamburg, which they execute. Danger not cleared yet. In the corner to Braunschweig. Delivery too long and a foul committed in the melee anyway. Now, given some of the balls that have come in from corners, it's not a surprise to look back on last season for Brown Tribe and see the fact that they scored just one goal from 152 corners. Tim Walter, the Hamburg head coach, talked about taking Braunschweig very seriously. He said, league or cup, every game is of, is of equal importance for us. He wants his side to approach every game as if it's the final. 
important factors this evening. They've had a lot of the ball, they've had a lot of possession, but they've done very little with it. Peña Tauna, that's a good delivery. Luke Ihorst was ready to pounce for his second. It was Hamburg sporting director Michael Mutzel talking this week where he said it was silly to expect things to work 100% this early on in Tim Walter's tenure. But he said the concept of, is crucial and he feels that the players have fully invested in what Tim Walter wants to produce in terms of his approach to the game. The only issue for me this evening is they've had a lot of the ball but not produced enough threat with it there's been composure but no real conviction and something that has really been lacking at times is an injection of pace into their attacking movements and Gimara, the score of the opening goal for Hamburg is first for the Red Shorts an appropriate nickname given the new away kit that they are showing off today here in Braunschweig or oh, their space through the middle and it was spotted as well Robin Krauser tried to thread the needle but couldn't quite pull it off and now Hamburg comes straight down the other end Robert Glatzel has been kept relatively quiet by his standards tonight Sonny Kittle, lovely footwork in tight spaces. Kinsombi flicked on, another chance for Hamburg and gobbled up by Yasmin Fezic. Bakary Yatta, the second half substitute. Trying to catch him off guard with the first time effort. Not the cleanness of connections. Kokievsky there feeling the after effects of a coming together. Idea, wrong execution. Viva doing well. Sean Lau and it's broken well here for Braunschweig. Huge chance and now Towner on the follow-up blocks. Nicolau with the next effort that's repelled. But there's blood in the water here in Braunschweig and Eintracht sense it. And they have picked up where they left off at the end of the first half as well. They were the side that were in the ascendancy. They were the side that were creating more threat in front of goal. And you were waiting to see what the response from Hamburg would be. And it's a tame one so far. They've made two changes at half-time. They've brought on Bakary Yatta. They've brought on Moritz Heyer. The fresh legs have failed to produce a change in impetus here. Uh, the chant you can hear there from the fans is, well, I'll hold the thought because free kick taken quickly. 
Kinsombi. Now with higher into the handball on the cross there, but no real appeals. Jimara. Well, Glatzel's done well to win it and ride the challenge. Goes it alone, Robert Glatzel. My word, that was not far away. Yasmin Fezic was worried and had every right to be. It's been a frustrating evening so far for Robert Glatzel in front of goal. And when the service isn't forthcoming, Sometimes you have to turn into your own provider. Seven goals in six DFB Pokal games before tonight. Talking in an interview with the Morgan Post, he said, I love the Pokal, it's pure knockout football that really motivates me. And when asked about that famous hat-trick he scored in the 5-4 loss to Bayern in 2019, he said, it is the highlight of my career, but I'd like to create another with Hamburg. My ball finding Kinsombi. Sean Lau. Well, Sean Lau has slipped. Chance now for Peña Tauna to use those fresh legs to Braunschweig's advantage. Found the space well, the pass though let him down. Gimara again. He's a right back, Jan Gimara, but flits here, there, and everywhere. He's popped up on the left wing as much as he's popped up on the right tonight. And here he is again in the centre of the park now, playing the role of playmaker. A bit of freedom and flexibility in this Hamburg side under Tim Walter. Glatzel peeling off at the back post. Close attention. Made by Robin Kalser. Again, Hamburg looked to change the angle from the corner. Leibold clipping it in. Sean Lau gets his head to the ball and it will count as a shot on goal, but it's a team one. Always going to be difficult to generate power on that headed effort. You've got to think that Michael Schieler will be delighted with what he's seen from his side, especially the response he's seen since they fell behind from that goal by Jan Gimara. Peels for offside against Glatzel. Struggle to keep that one in play and does. Big chance, Luke Ihorst, scorer of Braunschweig's first, looking to turn provider for the second. And some haphazard defending from Hamburg, it has to be said, but they survived the scare. Sean Lau with space to work with. Caught by Carlson. That's 
fair to say that Robin Carlser has made his presence felt in midfield today. And if anything, he's lucky to have not seen a card matching the colour of his shirt so far. Another set-piece opportunity for Hamburg. They have struggled to really make anything of them so far. That was rather uninspiring as well, but now here come Braunschweig heading, looking for Luke Ihorst. He's going to have to hold the ball up here. And has actually drawn the foul. He's done really well there, the youngster. And it rightly receives a response from the home crowd. <laughs> Those are some white flags, though, on Luke Horst. The two goal scorers tangling at the other end. Carlson, that's a great delivery, huge chance! And the chance is blown! The offside flag has gone up, so it would not have counted. At the time of planting his head at goalward, Morris Multau wasn't to know that. But that is a moment that can really keep the wind in the sails of Eintracht Braunschweig. Every challenge one is being cheered now. This is a real cup tie. And I have to say, I'm loving every second of it. And the fans at the Eintracht Stadion are as well, and why not? A winless start to the season, a goalless draw against Kaiserslautern, followed by their first home game of the season, which ended in a 4-0 loss to Victoria Berlin last weekend. And my, how the mood has changed now. Just a week on. No longer are we listening to whistles from the ranks. Instead, we've got cheers, and here they come again. Morris Mortal, and a big challenge that had to be made by Sebastian Schornlau. But I tell you, if you were a neutral, who didn't know much about these two sides, and I told you that one was in the German second tier and one was in the German third tier, I don't think I'm putting my neck too far out the window to say that many would guess that Braunschweig were the team that in, were in the try to Bundesliga right now. And as a result, we're going to see a change here. For Hamburg, Maximilian Rohr is coming off to be replaced. <laughs> moment for Hamburg and the man just brought off the bench Ansi Suonen and 20 year old Finn moved to Hamburg from Finland back in 2017 has come through the club's academy and again the chance of stand up for the Lions Before the game, that there were a smattering of 
Hamburg fans in attendance. It's fair to say that they've been outnumbered and drowned out as well by the home fans who really are trying to lift their team to greater heights here today. Braunschweig have been knocked out in the first round of the DFB Pokal 24 times out of 52 previous campaigns. Last season was not one of those occasions when they picked up a stunning 5-4 victory against Bundesliga side Hertha Berlin. Sean Lau improvised as well. Gets it back from Kittel. Immediately the runners stream forward. It's a good idea there from Ansi. Honan just didn't quite have any of his teammates in the same wavelength. over Hertha last season was their first in the first round in four seasons for Eintracht Braunschweig. They took an early 2-0 lead, they got pegged back to 2-2, went 3-2 ahead, got pegged back to 3-3. And just when it looked like the tide might be turning in Hertha's favour, Braunschweig took the lead before marching on to a 5-3 victory at the end of a barnstorming first round tie. Mara there, under pressure, but relieved it well, and Bakariata thought he was being fouled as he looked to latch on to the end of a 1-2, but nothing given by referee to be as felt. Flames lingering under the surface here of a heated battle so far. An emotional match, and both sides and sets of players will have to keep those emotions in check as we enter the closing stages here. No matter what tonight, we will have a winner. It may take 90 minutes, it may take 120, or it may take a shootout. But Morris Multar wants to avoid that fate. Went it alone when Brian Henning had made a great run in support. But the chance did open up for Morris Multar. He saw his name up in lights, but couldn't find the target. for his side. It's a good 
good corner. Oh, it's dangerous, and Glatzel's there. He may have not known much about it, but Robert Glatzel provides the finishing touch that Hamburg have been so desperate for in this second half. He is a cup specialist. Eight goals now in seven DFB Pokal appearances. The flick on was from a brown strike player, but Glatzel, right place, right time, gets his foot on the ball. And Hamburg have reclaimed the lead here. And much like in the first half, the goal comes against the run of play. But do not doubt what it means to Robert Glatzel. Big moment for the man signed from Cardiff. Scored on the opening match day against Schalke in a 3-1 win. Hamburg starting as they mean to go on, but Braunschweig are not about to raise the white flag here. They were the side that were in the ascendancy. They were the side looking more likely to score the next goal. They've picked themselves up once in this game. Can they do it twice? Twenty minutes remaining in this dear people Carl first round tie, which has produced a bit of a classic. It has to be said. The emotions have been high, and the football may not have been the most attractive, but it's been a hard fought and gritty encounter. And Hamburg scored eight goals across the two games against Braunschweig last season in the title Bundesliga. They've had their lives made a lot more difficult by the Lions this evening. Long ball, looking for Sonny Kittel. And well dealt with in the end by Danilo Viva. Kittel to take the corner. Henning with his head to the ball. Hamburg still sends a chance. What a tire there with the shot well blocked. That cross will go behind. I have to say, Brian Henning, man on the ball here, the number six for Braunschweig. So impressive today. Twenty six years of age, very nifty midfielder. Worked the ball well in tight spaces. It's been a creative spark for Braunschweig at all times. And here come Hamburg, though, the creative spark at the other end. Back, Riata. Well, he got that all wrong. You can see what he's trying to do. Open the foot up, look for a finish at the near post. He did well, the time is run, the offside trap broken. Crown strike not holding the best line there. And in opening his foot up, he lost the control and put it well wide. Robert 
Ratzel trying to hold up the ball under pressure from Berendt. Thought he had won the foul instead. Ihorst trying to provide the chance for an equaliser here. from Braunschweig. I have to say, the performance today has been night and day compared to that 4-0 loss against Victoria Berlin. But today has been a day of strange twists and turns. Eintracht Frankfurt knocked out by local rivals Mannheim. Köln and Mainz were both taken to a penalty shootout, which they survived. Wolfsburg needed extra time to beat Fortier, Preuss and Munster. And news now breaking that Wolfsburg may get knocked out of the DFB Pokal because Mark van Bommel made six substitutions. That's a story that I'm sure will develop over time. For now, though, our focus is on the final just over a quarter of an hour here at the Eintracht Stadion. A classic cup game between two fallen giants of German football. This used to be a fixture that was a staple of the Bundesliga fixture list every season. Now both plying their trade in the lower tiers of German football. Nevertheless, Braunschweig Hamburg have put on quite a show today. A gritty, entertaining heart-in-mouth moment type game in the DFB Pokal first round and we've got 15 minutes remaining Braunschweig have come from a goal down once already can they do it a second time we see there though the improvements have been made by Hamburg they had a lot of possession without doing much with it in the first half they've been a lot more ambitious and a lot more clinical in the second half nevertheless it's Braunschweig who have had more shots on goal but are still behind in this game. Spreading the play out wide to Suhonen. And a great cross from the young Finn. No sign of the white flag being raised. Ilhorst got past a couple of challenges there, but ultimately a move that ran out of steam. With a 2-1 lead, it does play into Hamburg's hands. They're happy to take the sting out of the game, they're happy to play proceedings at a slower pace, retain possession, keep things tight. The idea being that if they can keep Braunschweig off the ball, then Braunschweig won't be able to score. But they say that they bring on a man to try and settle things down a little bit. Kaufman, Mikkel Kaufman on for Sonny Kittel. Kittel making his first start since fracturing his tibia a few months ago. <laughs> recreate the heroics of the brace he scored in the 4-0 win on the final day of last season against Braunschweig. Winning with the first time effort, it looked a good connection on the volley as well. Kievsky's going to give chase to try and keep the ball in play, does well. Fighting and battling for his side and that's what the fans want to see. 
It's all getting a bit feisty as we enter it. the closing stages. Tobias Feltz needs to keep a lid on things. Morris Multalp has been a nuisance all evening for this Hamburg side in one of the danger men for Braunschweig all evening. Now they have a chance from a free kick. Eva May is in there. They headed backwards instead of forwards. Henning trying to keep it in the mix. Yatta, that's not the most convincing defensive work you've seen. Eva May using a lot of strength there. Unfortunately, all out of play. And throwing, so it's hard work for naught. And Mikhail Schiele said we have to go pedal to the metal and sacrifice a lot. Hamburg are an extremely strong side, he said. But it's fair to say that his side are laying it all on the line here today in the bid to try and get into the DFB Pokal second round for the second season running. For now, precious seconds being taken off the clock. David Kinsombi down injured, needing treatment. Well, in his two previous DFB Pokal participations with Holstein Kiel and VfB Stuttgart, Tim Walter reached the round of 16 on both occasions. See that Kinsombi. Seem to be moving absolutely fine. Not quite sure what went on there. For now, though, a couple of changes for Braunschweig. And a big one as well, Martin Kobianski is on. He was the hat-trick hero in the 5-4 victory over Hertha Berlin in the first round of the DFB Pokal last season. He is on for the final 10 minutes. Can he produce the moment of magic that Braunschweig need? Lasse Schluter has also come on to replace Kievski. And this is the time for Brown trying to lay it all on the line. They've got nothing to lose. They were the underdogs coming into this game. They've given a great account of themselves. They've fallen behind twice in the game. And the third close there. Mikhail Kaufmann, the Dane, trying to put the game beyond doubt. But they're going to have to risk it, Braunschweig, and as a result, chances will likely pop up for Hamburg at the other end. But these are the do-or-die moments in the DFB Pokal that can really set teams apart. Side flag is up to stop Bakary Yatta in his tracks. It's a good ball forward. Kenya Sauna wasn't expecting it. Couldn't bring the ball down under his spell as a result. Kinsombi now bringing it forward for Hamburg. Leibolt back to Kinsombi. Really Glatzel in the middle to aim for, but Yatta's at the back post. Flashed across the face of goal. No takers to provide the final touch.
And it's Robert Glapsel's goal that separates the sides. He is a cup specialist, thrives in this competition and hasn't had a lot to work with tonight, but has played a key part in Hamburg's performance as he's moved on to eight goals in seven DFB Pokal appearances in his career. What an incredible record. One that someone like Erling Haaland of Borussia Dortmund would be proud of. He's got six in six after last night's hat-trick. And that's it. Yesterday was a day when all the favourites seemed to cruise through. The only real upset was Babelsberg knocking out the newly promoted Bundesliga side, Kreuter Fürth. Yesterday you don't see too often a foul throw penalised. The amount of times you see it not penalised, I have to say I've got a cheeky smirk on my face right now for the fact that the referee actually has blown his whistle for one. Tobias felt hats off to you. Tumara there, a bit of risky play but gets away with it. Finds Suhonen, now on to Bakary Yatta. Look how Kaufman wanted it through the middle, didn't get it. Glatzel scrapping away on the edge of the area, but it's Braunschweig who come away with the ball. Boya Fernandez pointing to exactly where he needed a teammate. Yatta obliged. Made his luck a little bit there, Bakary Yatta. And then draws the foul. He's a player with an incredible backstory, Bakary Yatta. So incredible that I can't really go into it now because it would take up at least 10 minutes to explain. But he comes from a refugee background and he came to Germany as a teenager seeking a fair chance. Fast forward to now and he's been playing for Hamburg for a couple of seasons and his story really shows that believing can pay off nevertheless. His identity is still, to this day, being investigated by German authorities with doubts about both age and name. Nevertheless, the club have stuck by him. He has stood firm. He has not let it detract from his progress and development as a footballer. And I would implore you to read a bit about his backstory if you have a spare moment because it's worth it, it's a story for the ages, something that wouldn't be surprising if it ended up getting turned into a Netflix documentary at some point. So now Robin Kauser, he's been flirting with that yellow card all evening and finally makes the relationship a little bit more serious. Glatzel, brilliant play again by Glatzel. Kaufman tried to seize the initiative. And a few anxious, nervous groans now amongst the home fans. They've really been behind their side, but they know time is running out for them to spring another surprise. No matter the result tonight, Michael Schiele will certainly be very pleased with the improvements his side have shown from the first home game of the season last weekend, the 4-0 loss to Victoria Berlin. He asked for a response and he has gotten it today because they have given a much better account of themselves and arguably on another day could have beaten Hamburg. Both of the Hamburg goals really were bolts from the blue. Braunschweig provided more threat throughout, but the control and dominance has been on the side of Hamburg, so it's hard to argue against them deserving this 2-1 lead. It's the plucky story of the underdogs, though, that just pulls at the heartstrings sometimes. 
question is, will they have one more chance to maybe steal a late?